Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We are looking at the Pythagorean theorem today. That's what our lesson will be focusing on. Um, the vocabulary we need for Pythagorean theorem is based around this. First off, a Pythagorean theorem is going to use a right angle triangle. So you can see there in the corner that you've got um, the square that means this is a right angle triangle. And there are three sides to every triangle. The two shorter length sides are called legs. It doesn't matter if you call this one A and this one B or this one A and this one B. It does not matter at all. The important thing is that C is always used for the angle or for the side exactly opposite the right angle. And that will be always the longest side of the triangle. It's called the hypotenuse. Um, but there's a picture of the different parts in the legs or the shorter length. C, the hypotenuse, is always opposite the right angle. So, Quick check which ones are sides and which ones are hypotenuse, which ones are our legs, which ones are the hypotenuse. Okay, this is either A or B. This one is either A or B. And this is C because it's opposite the 90 degree angle. That will make this our longest side length, the hypotenuse. All right, so this is the Pythagorean theorem. The square here will represent, again, that it's a right angle triangle. You need to be using that. If it's a right angle triangle, this equation will work. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Or in other words, the sum of the squares of the two shorter length sides of a right angle triangle are equal to the square of the remaining side. All right? Now, let's actually test this theory. Maybe Mr. Um, Pythagoras and all of his theorizing got it wrong and we've got to figure it out. It's our job and our responsibility to figure it out. Here is a triangle that has a length of 3, 4, and 5. And we're going to use that information because we've actually measured this out and this is actually 3, 4, 5. Um, it might not be, I don't know, but those can be the lengths of a right angle triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and plug them into this equation just to see if it works. Okay. A is equal to 4, B is equal to 3. Remember, A and B are our shorter lengths, and C is going to be our longer length, um, the hypotenuse. So we square those. 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25, and 16 plus 9 is 25. Maybe this Pythagoras guy actually knew what he was talking about um, when he put together this Pythagorean theorem. Or, I don't know, maybe we just got lucky with this triangle. But that is actually a proof that works. Um, <laughs> this, this equation does actually work. And we're actually going to use it from now on to try and find the length of some of the sides. We're going to find all three lengths. We'll find the, the length of A, B, and C as our unknown values. So in this triangle, right angle triangle, the unknown value is A. So we have to rearrange this equation to get A by itself. To do that, what we're going to do is subtract b from both sides of the equation, which gives us that. And then we'll take the square root of both sides of the equation, remembering the square root of a squared leaves us with just a. And the square root of c squared minus b squared is equal to the square root of c squared minus b squared. Now we have the equation set up to solve for a value of a. And all we need to do now is substitute in what we know. We know that c is equal to 13. So that'll be 13 squared. And b is equal to 12, so that'll be 12 squared. 13 squared is 169. 12 squared is 144. 169 minus 144 is 25. And the square root of 5 is, or 25 is 5. Now, we know the square root of 25 is actually plus or minus 5. But when we're measuring length, we can discard the negative number. We know it's going to be a positive for the, for the length measurement. So we're never you're never going to see this say plus or minus 5 because again it's a length. It's always going to be positive. All right. So that is the Pythagorean theorem in work when we're given the hypotenuse and one of our legs. Let's see another one here where we're given a different hypotenuse and a leg and we're not given our length for b. We're going to follow exactly the same steps. First we rearrange the the equation by subtracting a from both sides of the equation and then taking the square root of both sides. Square root of b squared is just b. The square root of c squared minus a, c, a squared is the square root of c squared minus a squared. 
That is the equation right there that you will use. From now on, you can just write this down and you'll never have to do this transformation again. If you're ever looking for the side length of B, just use that equation. Substitute what we know. 17 is our hypotenuse. 8 is our leg. 17 squared is 289. 8 squared is 64. And now we're going to move down to our next step of subtracting them. When we subtract them, B is equal to the square root of 225, which will give us the length of 15. So this length from the corner up to here is 15. All right? So we've used the Pythagorean theorem to solve for our value of A. We've used it to solve for a value of B. And now we're going to show another example using the Pythagorean theorem to solve for a value of C. Am I too predictable? I don't know. So here is a triangle where we're given the length of both legs, A and B, and we need to find the value for C. Again, we're using our Pythagorean theorem. It's already set up to solve for C squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the square root of both sides of the equation. Square root of C squared gives me the value of C. And then I take the square root of the whole right side, B plus squared plus A squared. All right. So that will give me the length of my C side of this triangle of hypotenuse. All right. B squared is 12 squared. A squared is 9 squared. Again, these are A and B. It doesn't matter what order they're in because both ways we're going to get the square value of them, 144 and 81, and we're going to add them together. It doesn't matter which order you add them in, so it really doesn't matter which letter is A and which one's B. It really doesn't make a bit of difference at all. 144 plus 81 is 225. Hey, we've seen that number before. Our C value, or our hypotenuse, is equal to 15. All right? So there we have it. Our hypotenuse C is 15. And that is how we solve for A, B, and C using the Pythagorean theorem. So here again are our equations. If you're solving for the value of A, you'll use this equation. If you're solving for the value of B, you'll use that equation. And if you're solving for the value of C, you'll use this equation. All right? Again, these are just different versions of the same equation. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Now we're going to have a pause solve check session where you will pause the recording, solve for the distance or the length or the measurement, whatever you're, in this case, the height that you're looking for, solve it on your own, and then check using the information that I give you. So pause the recording right now, try and solve it, and then check your answers. All right. Did you get 54 feet for your value of A? Is that what you got? Take a quick look at your work. Did you get 54 feet? I sure hope not. It's completely wrong. You know, <laughs> that can't possibly be longer than the hypotenuse. Anything longer than the hypotenuse wouldn't make any sense. All right, let's back up a bit. <laughs> the correct answer is that A is equal to 18. And here's the work that would show that. Again, A is equal to C squared minus B squared, all inside of the square root symbol. 30 squared minus 24 squared. 900 minus 576 gives us 324. And we take the square root of that, which gives us 18. So there's all of the steps. So that was our check part. All right, one more question in the pause, solve, check. All right, you pause the recording and solve for the value of A, and then turn the recording back on to check your work. All right, here is the work for solving that question. It's all here. Again, we're using this equation. A is equal to C, the square root of C squared minus B squared. So we'll get 17, which is our hypotenuse. It's opposite the right angle. That's our C, C value. So 17, we'll square that. And then we subtract 8 squared. So 289 minus 64 will give us, again, that 225 seems to be coming up an awful lot today. Our A value is 15. All right. So hopefully you were able to get those two correct, solving for our missing values. Remember those equations. All you need to know to solve for the A value, the B value, or the C value using the Pythagorean theorem. Have a wonderful day.